Welcome to uh, Indian Time. This is the month of December, or in the Salish, it's Esats uh, Mispqanis, which is the uh, trapping month. This is the time of the year uh, uh, where the, uh, the ancestors and our elders of the past used to do a lot of their trapping. Uh, some of the things that they trapped uh, uh, were chidlech, uh, which is muskrat. Can, that we'll use that as a instead of using place names today, we'll use animal name, uh, which will be chidlech, which means muskrat, and we'll have a plant name. Uh, we'll use hasks, which means lovage. I know a lot of people out there has uh, have a hard time pronouncing the word hasks. I've heard it pronounced many different ways, but the correct pronunciation is chasks. It comes from way down here, chasks. Okay, as I said, this is a, the trapping month, and a lot, this time of the year, the, the Salish and Ponderay Indian people would get ready to do all of their trapping, and then some of the things that, that they trapped was uh, Odlot, Martin, Odlot, Spa, uh, which is a weasel, and Chi, Tzachadle is mink, Tzachadle is mink, Iltku, Iltku is otter, Skaleu is beaver, and as I said earlier, Chichidle, who is muskrat. A lot of these animals were very important uh, to, our, to our ancestors and our parents and grandparents of the past. But, uh, not only did it, uh, in, in later years, did uh, the, these pelts uh, bring an income in terms of dollars, but also in earlier times they used these uh, pelts not only for themselves to, to uh, use as, uh, um, as food, uh, or as part of their clothing, but they also use it as trading material uh, with other um, with other tribes, or later on uh, with uh, fur traders and trappers who arrived in this country in later time. Some of the animal skins uh, were used in many different ways uh, for braid wraps. Uh, we see a lot of those still used today in our uh, dance outfits and people dancing. Uh, they use a lot of these. Uh, uh, animals and, and their braid, braid wraps and trimming their outfits or dance outfits. Uh, a lot of that today is used for uh, for show and for ornaments today. In the past, they were used for food and for for clothing and, and different things that uh, was necessary to to keep them warm. Some of the animals also uh, parts of the animals were used for for medicine for medicinal purposes. So. Uh, when they were trapping the animals, there was uh, a lot of the animals were used uh, not only for the skins, uh, for clothing and um, and ra braid wraps and other things, but the meat was used for food, and parts of the animal were used for medicine. So a lot of a lot of the animals, as as we all always hear, uh, never went to waste. It was always utilized one way or another. So that's uh, some of the things that uh, uh, took place in earlier times, a, a lot of the trapping this time of the month. And also, also from starting from last month in November, which is the Storytelling Month, the stories continue to be uh, told uh, throughout the winter months because this is a time when a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the families would settle down into uh, get prepared for the winter months, you know, the, all through the summer, the spring, and summer, and fall months, the people were, were gathering food and preparing for this time of the year. So once they got to this time of the year, and if they were successful 
and getting all of their food, and then they would settle in and get ready for the winter months. Uh, at this time, they would be telling stories, and as I said, some of the trapping would be done, some ice fishing, uh, a lot of things that uh, people continued to do to work to, to survive through the winter months. At this time of the year, the storytelling was, was uh, a very important part of education for, for our young children, for our young people. We call them creation stories or coyote stories or whatever you, whatever you call them. But I like to call them creation stories because from the time that the creation, uh, when, the, when our elders would tell about the things that were being created here, the animal people were the first to arrive here, the first to put on this, on this earth to, to uh, prepare and to get rid of the, the evil things and, here, and to get it ready for um, the human uh, as, we came by, as we came by later. So a lot of the stories that uh, later on I hope to get some of the elders to come in and tell some of these stories during the winter months uh, because this is the only time um, traditionally we are allowed to tell uh, coyote stories or, or uh, creation stories for, for various reasons, for uh, reasons that we don't question. This was, this was something that was passed down from generation to generation. So hopefully we can get some of the elders, as we did last year, uh, we got a couple of elders come in on the show to tell some of these stories. And I'm hoping that our, in my next uh, time, my next show, I will have one or two elders to tell some of these stories. So that's something to, uh, to, to look forward to. Uh, some of the things that also, uh, have taken place in, in this time of the month is in, in the history uh, in the month of uh, December. Uh, December 1st in, in 1809, David Thompson built the Salation House or Salish House on the Clark's Fork between um, Plains and Thompson Falls, uh, Plains which we call in Tsukui, a place of uh, elderberry and Thompson Falls, which is Skytlkum because of the falls. Uh, this area was where uh, David Thompson built uh, the Salesian House, uh, which is uh, back in uh, December 1st, in 1809. On December 3rd, 1841, about uh, one third of the Salish um, at Stevensville uh, were baptized by uh, Pierre uh, Jean de Desmet. Um, that was on December uh, 3rd. And then on um, the 10th of December 1948, uh, the voters approved amendment to the uh, tribal constitution allowing tribal council to use tribal funds to, uh, for benefit of the reservation. Coming up, uh, I'd like to remind you also next, uh, actually this coming Wednesday, um, the uh, tomorrow, which is uh, the eleventh or the no, it'll be the twelfth tomorrow. We're having our monthly uh, cultural workshop down at the Longhouse, and uh, it's open to everyone. I encourage everyone to attend. It's very informational. You you learn a little bit about the uh, the Salish language, the Salish culture. And I encourage, as I always do, all of you uh, program managers and department heads who are listening to encourage your employees to attend these workshops. It's uh, very important. Uh, our elders are, are very concerned that the information and the values of who we are as Salish people are not being passed down, are not being learned. Um, we all know that those values have brought us to where we're at today. And in order to survive in the future, we need to maintain those values. And then to maintain those values, we need to learn them. So that's the workshop starts tomorrow about 9.30, and it, <coughs> excuse me, and it goes till about 3.30. That's the second Wednesday of every, every month if there's no, uh, nothing going on down at the Longhouse. Also, I'd like to remind the, um, the tribal uh, people that Saturday is a very important day in our tribal government, which is the uh, general election. 
Um, be sure to check the times and the polling places that's listed in the Sharkusta uh, and get out and vote. Uh, it's very important that we take uh, uh, interest and be active in our tribal government. We have to, as people, um, give that support and guide those tribal leaders in, in the direction that we, as um, uh, Salish and Kootenai people, want them to go to, to lead us. So your vote is very important, so be sure to get out and vote this Saturday. On the 21st of uh, December, uh, which is a Friday, uh, is our annual Salish uh, Pondere and Kootenai Tribal Elders Christmas Dinner. That's the 21st of uh, th this month, which is uh, coming up soon. It's a Friday. Uh, so we usually try to start about 11 o'clock, and it'll go till around 2 o'clock, or as long as people will stay. So please uh, it's, uh, remind your uh, parents and grandparents, the elders, it's the annual uh, Salish Pondere and Kootenai Tribal Elders Christmas Dinner down at the Longhouse. Uh, also, those of you that are listening that have any entertainment that they would like to share, bring, in, bring down, come down about 11 o'clock. Uh, we usually have a few of the schools, young kids will come over and sing Christmas carols for the elders. Uh, a couple of years ago, I think we had Louis Adams and a couple of others um, playing some few, uh, flute music. Uh, so if you have any talents or anything that you would like to share with the elders to entertain the elders for a couple hours, uh, be sure to bring uh, your instrument or whatever and come on down and join the elders. That's the 21st uh, Friday. On the 24th and 25th of this month are tribal holidays. Uh, so at this time of the year, usually a lot of the tribal businesses can kind of slow down because of the holidays and people are with their families. And so um, be sure to uh, uh, join the elders for the dinner and make sure that you have um, a good, uh, safe holiday. And, uh, what else is coming up here? I'm sure, I, know, I don't know if you uh, haven't heard, as I said earlier, the, uh, the importance of, of our values, of our language and our culture is, uh, uh, the survival of our future is very important to that. We have a group, a small group of people uh, who the elders and the, and the uh, culture committees are supporting um, who are um, trying to uh, to help them start an, an immersion school, a language school, that the number of people, fluent speakers, the sailor speakers are, are dwindling down rapidly. And uh, so there's a small group of people that are working hard to try and to establish, um, trying to stabilize the loss of our language. And through this, uh, they've, they've met with other people in other ways. And, as you know, we've tried many different ways to, to teach our language, uh, uh, TPR, uh, writing, and whatever. And immersion is, we're going to try to do an immersion school to um, these young people. I really encourage uh, your support for these young people. Um, they worked hard. Uh, they're trying to raise uh, some funding, and they're going to, the immersion school, they're going to start with the young people, our young children, who learn the fastest, and hopefully as they grow up, will create um, other programs for the language uh, through uh, the help of not only our program, the Culture Committee, but other programs that, uh, um, that are available, other teachers. Um, the Salish Culture Committee is um, also nearing the completion of a, of a history book, or part of the history book of the, the, what we call the 1908 uh, Swan Massacre, where some of our tribal members were killed in the Swan Valley by a game warden at this time of the year during the hunting season. And if you have any, uh, uh, there was an article in the Charcoast, if there's any pictures or photos that you have to share with us, please. Uh, uh, 
call us or come and see us down at the Longhouse and we can make copies of them to, so we can add to, to this book. Okay, that brings us to my guest today, who is uh, Wendell Livingston, uh, who is the uh, um, gift manager over at the People Center. But before we meet uh, Wendell, before we get into discussing anything, uh, we'll go ahead and take a short break here, then we'll be right back. I really got wasted last night. I think I had a really good time with Tom. I just don't remember. <laughs> I've done that one before. <laughs> I hope they understand they have our future in their hands. If you choose to be sexually active, be safe, don't risk your life for a good time now. Native American women are fast becoming infected with STD and AIDS. Welcome back to Indian Time. My guest today is uh, Wenda Livingston. Uh, she's the a gift shop manager for the People's Center. Uh, yeah, she's been there since the, uh, April of 1996. But Wenda, I'd like to welcome you to the show. But uh, I think first of all, Wenda, I would like uh, maybe in let the people know a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I worked, um, I lived off the reservation most of my life. I've really only lived back here on the reservation since I've been working at the People Center. Uh, for 26 years, I worked for the Social Security Administration in Kalispell, Montana. And after I retired from the federal government, then I came to work here. And my parents were Woodrow Wendell, otherwise known as Sonny uh, Silverthorne, at Edna May. Um, a lot of people who come into the People Center say, you look familiar. <laughs> and that's because uh, most of them know my sisters, uh, Joyce Silverthorne and Ruth Silverthorne, and then our brother Lester. Um, so I've learned a lot since I have come to work at the People Center. Um, Where did you live uh, in, in, the, in the time be before you moved back here? Well, my father was in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot. <laughs> Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. um, Spokane, Washington. And then um, I came to Kalispell to work for the federal government. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we moved a lot. <laughs> okay, Wenda is here to, to update us a little bit about some of the activities and the things that are taking place over at the People's Center. and. Uh, uh, so what's happening out there now? Well, we have several projects going on. Uh, right now on Mondays, uh, we're having a Write in Salish program uh, taught by Lucy Vandenberg, and that's from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Each, each Monday. Bring your brown bag lunch and join us. Um, there's, no, there's no admission, there's no charge. On Thursday night, we're having coyote stories told by Stephen Small Salmon, and that's from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Um, sometimes it even runs a little longer, and admission is free, of course, to that too. On uh, Friday afternoons, we're having kind of, an a kind of a craft afternoon. People can come bring a project they're working on, or if they want to start something new, maybe work on beadwork or other cultural items. Um, staff will be a, available to assist with design or construction. Uh, this Friday, um, Ushini is going to come and show us how to make gloves. And so that should be a really good one. Um, Beginners and experts are welcome. Bring your materials. Uh, we also have some supplies in the gift shop. Uh, whereas we have beads, uh, needles, um, the things to go with doing beadwork. Um, so, so is this every week that this takes place, or is it just certain times? That let's see. Uh, the um, the coyote stories will run through uh, December 27th. Um, as far as I know, we're going to continue doing the, the projects on Friday afternoon. Uh, the um, Salish classes 
They started uh, November 19th, as far as I know. They'll just continue through the winter months. Um, we're also running a, spe a sale in the gift shop, 15% off on everything in the gift shop. Uh, gifts, beadwork, uh, supplies through the month of December. So come on in. <laughs> Be glad to see you. Okay, now I understand there's some uh, beaded bags that are on display over there. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, the, right now we have 25 beaded bags on display. They're in our back gallery. Uh, they are part of the 49 bags that we purchased from Doug Allard a few years ago. And some the 25 bags we have on display right now traveled for a while to several other museums throughout the uh, United States about last year or so. And uh, that's really nice to see. And they will be up through the month of January. Are, are they, do you have the ages on these bags or what kind of information? That a lot of them have the name of the last person who owned them. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't always know who the person was who made them. Um, they came to us, um, that's the way they came to us. And I think some of them say who th made them. Uh, some of them are examples of, you know, like different areas. Mm -hmm. But um, most of them are listed by the person who owned them last. So most of those, is, uh, most of them or all of those uh, bags that are made there are from here or are they from different tribes? Or? Mostly from this area. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, Dalen could probably fill you in a little bit more on that. <laughs> okay, what other kind of things, activities that uh, not only are taking place now but have taken place in the past at the People's Center? Well, one of our big uh, things that goes on each year is Native American Awareness Week, which is the third week in September each year. Uh, we bring in busloads of kids from schools from both on and off the reservation. We usually have things going on like drying meat, um, people doing beadwork, somebody maybe tanning hides, um, games. We have featured some of the uh, games like shinny, uh, double ball. Um, we always have a lot of schools that come to the People's Center. Uh, a lot of them some of them come from as far away as Moscow, Idaho. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. We have a group of French exchange students that come up at least once or twice a year from Moscow, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And um, we also have the program called Native Adventures where we offer tours on the reservation. We haven't had a person in that position for about two years, and we're just in the process of hiring someone to get that uh, maybe going a little stronger again. What kind of areas or what kind of tours are, are this na Native Adventures? Basically, it's, take, uh, it's, it's a person goes with people. And it's mostly to give them a perspective of history and current events from the Native American point of view. Uh, they go places like the Bison Range, the Catholic Church, um, the People's Center. Um, they can go, they can tailor the uh, tour to maybe what people are interested in. Um, a lot of people, of course, are interested in Native American history. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for them to get a perspective from our point of view, maybe not necessarily from the Caucasian point of view that maybe they read in their books. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand when you do have the Native, Native uh, American Week, there's anywhere from 12 to 1,300 students come out there and to, to visit. And it, yes, every bit. I, I, was, I, had, I was fortunate enough to be part of it this year, and, and I know I, I, di I didn't say too much. I kept going back from the dry meat rack to the fry bread, <laughs> dry meat fry bread, and, and it was very... Very good, and you have a, a lot of uh, volunteers that come out and, and assist uh, the People Center with this. What this yes, week? We do. I guess I, actually it's a three-day. Uh, it's not it's about a three-day uh, process uh, for the students. Or this year we did, I think, three days, and they did have dried meat. Um, 
fry bread's always a popular mm -hmm. stand. We had uh, volunteers from the Kicking Horse Job Corps. And in fact, we had some very capable young people who just stepped right in and took over the fry bread uh, uh, part of it, and uh, yes. they were wonderful. It was delicious. I was there. <laughs> it was great. And I know that uh, uh, there's a, a plans, there's different plans that, that take place throughout the year, and I know the People Center participate also in the, uh, the annual, uh, what we call the River Honoring, uh, stations that are down there along the the uh, Flathead River, yes, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is, uh, I guess, a lot of uh, a big part also, I guess, of the tribal education, not only for our own tribal members, but for a lot of the uh, non-members who live on the reservation. Yes, um, a lot of the uh, people like you say, from on the reservation, are interested in the people who are here. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, a lot of our business are also tourists, people who um, are interested in what goes on on a reservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the questions they'll say, they'll come in and say, well, where do the Indians live? And well, you know, it's like, all around here, I guess sometimes maybe they expect to see us in teepees or. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that's always something. Well, well, Winda, I, I want to thank you for joining me today. We're running out of time. Uh, time slips by uh, when we're, I guess, when we're having fun. And I'd like to thank you again for your information. And someday we hope to have you back uh, on, our, on the show here. Thank you. Other, other things. Uh, again, I'd like to remind everyone that tomorrow is our. Um, it's our workshop, uh, cultural workshop down at the Longhouse from 9.30 to 3.30. And a lot of the activities that Wenda uh, mentioned are similar down there. If you have a project that you want to work on, bring it with you. If you want to do moccasins, uh, uh, work on an outfit, dance outfit, anything that you have, bring it with you. Elders were more than happy to, to help you along with your uh, uh, enthusiasm to learn the language and other cultural Thank you uh, for joining me today. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I won't be back until uh, in January for the next show. Thank you. <laughs>